<laughs> so if you're getting the Cobb lift kit, you're probably not going to be able to get those studs out at home. Yeah. Come on, Sam. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Wace and today I'm gonna to be doing a whole lot of stuff. And I'm not gonna lie, <laughs> I'm not particularly excited. Um, some of you guys, if you've been following the channel, you know that I'm currently on coilovers. Uh, last year I was lowered and this year I decided to raise it. I'm still on my silver coilovers, but I wanna make some changes this year. And one of the changes is I wanted to do more uh, dirt driving and dirt racing and rallycross stuff like that. So in order to help me with that, I teamed up with Cobb, who was nice enough. Oh, I can't even believe I'm saying this. I actually teamed up with Cobb. I, uh, they sent me out their 1.5 inch lift kit to put on my car, which I'm very, very thankful to them for doing that. So thank you guys very much, Marshall. I really, really appreciate this. And I'm gonna be putting that lift kit on my stock suspension. And that's what I'm gonna try out this year. I don't, obviously I don't wanna use uh, coilovers that are designed for uh, lowered applications and track day stuff because it just doesn't really make any sense on the dirt. So before I move on to actual rally style or off-road style coilovers, I wanted to use the stock coilovers or the stock suspension to get a feel for how the car handles before I go out and make a big purchase or, or have a company send me out something. Because as you guys know, I, I like to start small and work my way up. I'm not a professional and so I think it's important for me to know what the before and after feels like. And if any of you guys are like me, which I know most of you are, it's important for you also to be able to hear how it feels before and how it's gonna feel after. So a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> and I'm gonna be messing around with end links. Oh, please help me. Anyway, I just wanna let you guys know, I do have a website, heavymetalrex.com, where I do sell a lot of cool merch. Uh, not like this, this is actually Graham's t-shirt, which is super comfortable. So if you wanna support him or any one of us, check out our websites. I also have the memberships turned on on my YouTube. So if you're looking for a way to support this channel, that's the way to do it. So the real meat and potatoes of this installation is actually gonna be getting the lift kit onto the coilovers, which this part's actually not that difficult because it's a spacer kit. So what this will do is bolt right on top of the, uh, the stock suspension, and then the stock suspension bolts right back into the car. Now, there are a couple of things uh, that we do need to change, like we are going to have to add longer studs to the back of the, uh, the rear suspension, the rear coils, and we do get aftermarket end links for the rear. So we're gonna have, to, and they are adjustable, which, oh man, I don't know if I'm ready for this, but with Cobb's instructions, I don't think that's gonna be too, too difficult. Um, most of the time that's gonna take most of my time is gonna be actually taking off the old coilovers and getting the new coilovers. Actually, it's gonna be taking off the old coilovers. Uh, I am also returning to the factory lower control arms because I no longer need any sort of camber in the back. Um, that was something that was more for the tuner life. We are no longer doing that. We're gonna raise the car. And the car is actually raised right now. I think it's about like six and a half inches off the ground, which is, that's pretty impressive. And that's just with the tires. Uh, so this is actually gonna be happening um, I am actually going to be using these SPC toe arms, which I didn't use last year because they were about the same length as the stock toe arms. But what I'm finding is the camber bolts aren't giving the, the proper adjustment. Actually, I think some, one of them might, might be even going bad. So I'm gonna replace these. So we have not like added toe, but easier toe adjustment because these are always easier and give more minute changes than like what the uh, camber bolt can allow. So I'm gonna be installing these as well. This is a lot of stuff. I have to get this done for the most part this evening and uh, I'm going to do my best to try and do it. And, but you guys know, for me, this is actually a really tough, uh, tough thing to do. Suspension is hard for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and get the car up on jacks, get the tires off and start getting the old suspension out, which I'm not really gonna film because that's not important to this. If you're looking for a full on guide on how to install coilovers, I will link a video somewhere over here of when I actually installed these silvers, which again was a huge pain in the ass, but there's a lot of good information in there if you're looking for it. Uh, for this, mainly I'll probably start all this when everything is off of the car and the the uh, spacers are, will actually be ready to install the spacers on the coilovers 
and then get those coilovers into the car and we can talk about all that. So another really cool piece that I have today, and I wanna thank Jeff Perrin for constantly giving me like really uh, unusual things that I've never seen before. So what he did was he actually sent me over uh, these jack pads, which I've never seen before. And this is the first time I'm using them and I'm actually gonna be putting them on the car right now. Uh, I'll show you guys what these look like. It's just little jack pads. And basically the idea is these will go onto the pinch welds and protect the pinch welds and have like a place for the jacks to be able to lift up the car. Uh, pretty cool. I actually have some blue Loctite. I know, I know some people actually recommend red Loctite. I don't have red Loctite. Just put some uh, blue Loctite on uh, these guys and just tighten them onto your pinch weld. And I'll show you what I, I actually already installed one of them. And it's like about six to eight pound foot. Like you can, you can hand tighten that. That's like not that bad. And, uh, and just, it, it, it will help because you kind of don't want to keep jacking up your car uh, where the pinch welds are because I've seen a lot of cars in the past like bend the pinch welds and stuff like that. You really don't want to do that. And so this is actually a, a nice little addition. So thank you, Jeff, for that. Thank you for thinking of me. I appreciate that. I told myself that when I was doing this or when I was going to do this, I was going to take a look at the brake pads as well. But check this out. Look at that. That is my driver's side brake pad. This is the outside one and this is the inside one. I don't know what the hell has happened here. And this was the passenger side. There's still a, like some meat left. Uh, this was the inside and this is the outside. So I, I don't know what's going on with my driver's side. It is just like eating it up. So I'm not really sure what to do. I'm not gonna put these back. I actually still have the OE pads. The OE pads still had so much meat on them. So I'm actually just gonna put the OE pads back on. And um, I think in the future, I'm gonna pick up like Hawks or uh, EBC red because yellow is not really necessary for me uh, anymore. Just wanted to show you what that looked like. All right, now setting up. So I've gotten both the front struts off and I'm just gonna kind of show you guys exactly how this works. This is pretty simple in its execution. I mean, there's really not much to it. You do actually, it will tell you the side that it needs to be facing. So in this case, it does say uh, I'm looking at say, it's the front of left-hand side or front of right-hand side. So you orient this depending on which side you're going. Here I am actually holding on to the left-hand side. So this is the driver's side um, stock coilover. Stocks. So what, basically what you need to do is left-hand side. So orient this in a way that makes sense. And of course the top moves. So you need to make sure that it is this is how it works. This is how it sits. So it needs to be facing this way. That's the most important thing. It needs to actually be facing the direction of the front of the car. So you'll have to, you'll have to double check and make sure that's right. And then all you really need to do is basically just uh, bolt it on. I mean, it's, it's really that easy. Like I said, most of the time is gonna be spent actually, I'm having a hard time doing this with my gloves. You're gonna spend more time taking the coilovers and the suspension apart than actually doing the install because really on the front, that's all there is to it. And once you take everything off, then it's a matter of just going backwards. So, and that's the front side. Now the rear side I'm actually working on right now. Here you can see I'm actually working on taking the rear off. It's a little bit more complicated uh, because we have end links there and you actually have to replace the studs that are on the stock coilover, but we'll talk about that. Now, the for the top hats, you de you want to have, it's just like the regular top hats as well. They say you don't really need to tighten them up too much, but really it's like a 14 pound foot is really all you need. Now, the problem with, with this is like finding a way to hold on to this while tightening it because the whole top does want to move. I'm just using my absolute sheer strength to keep it from keep it from rotating. And 14 pound foot really is not that much. And you can see I, I hand tighten those and it's, you know, I can do 14 pound foot by hand. That's, yeah, 14 pound, that's really not that bad. All right, they do give you these golden nuts to put on top, but if you have a strut tower, Chances are you probably have some nuts that came with it. In this case, I have some parent ones that go here and here. So I'm gonna reuse those 
And then on the, the empty one, I'm gonna put the nut that was uh, provided to me from Cobb. I end up having to put my, the ones that came with the parent uh, strut bar. So those go in and then the golden one that they provided went in there. This is kind of a pain in the ass if you're by yourself, but you know, just <laughs> do your best and you'll get to it. So now I just need to tighten these guys up and all I have left is to actually put, I gotta put the, uh, the whole knuckle and everything back onto the coilover. Now, something I want to point out about the stock end link, the stock end link does have a hex, uh, a hex area right here. So that's, you're going to have to get like a pass-through ratchet set, which I actually bought for this exact purpose. It's a pass-through ratchet set so that I could tighten this while putting the Allen key through the ratchet to keep this from moving. And that's how you're going to have to torque these guys down. So something to keep in mind about that. If you don't have that, you might run into some issues like I did. Okay, two things happened. It got really hot in my garage, so I had to open, open the door. I had to change because I started sweating in my sweatpants, but I wanted to put the car down and see what it looks like. So this is how much clearance we have on stock suspension. Damn, that is a lot. It is hella lifted. Uh, it is about the distance that I measured. So the way I measured it was try to get it as center as I can to right at this line of the tire, it's like about five, <laughs> it's about five inches, so there's plenty of room. I just wanted to put these down on both sides to make sure everything looked okay. I am a firm believer now of checking my work, uh, considering sometimes my work doesn't always end up the way that I expected. So this looks good, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna move on to the rears. There's a lot of work to be done here. I still have to take the control arms off. I have to take the uh, tie rods off, and then, of course, the coilovers themselves. The coils themselves, it's, uh, this is the part I'm actually not super looking forward to because this is, I find the rear suspension to be an incredible pain in the ass. So this is what I was referring to when I was talking about the hex in the rear end link. And so what I ended up having to do was the only way to, to do this was to put, what this is, this is a pass-through ratchet onto here and then pass through the hex so I can hold on to the bolt so I can actually turn this. Otherwise, I cannot turn this. And that is something you guys need to be aware about. If you don't have one of these, just pick one of these up. This is like a full uh, pass-through ratchet set. It was, I think it was like 20 bucks at Home Depot. And this is the only time I've ever had to use it. So very useful tool. But without that, this sucker ain't coming off. So you guys are gonna have to bear with me. They're doing some construction outside. So you might hear some uh, extra banging. So here's where we're at. Tie rods are in on both sides. That was a massive pain in the ass. I got the lower control arms back in there. The suspension is completely off. It took me a bit. Uh, now we're ready to actually see what you need to do to prepare the stock rear suspension because there's some, there's some funky stuff you need to do. Like you need to actually knock out these studs and put longer studs in there. And then we also need to prepare the rear end links. They also need to be adjusted a very specific way. I do have instructions on all of this, so I will put the instructions in the description as well, so you guys also know what it is I'm doing on paper. All right, so this is where most of us are gonna struggle. These studs need to be removed, but the only way I can do that, because I don't have a press, is to actually hammer them out. But what you wanna do is you wanna use something to hold onto the strut mount because you don't want the pressure to go into the spring. So I have these wooden blocks here that I put up against my step and I have this wooden block up against the strut mount and then I'm just gonna bang the hell out of this and hope I can get it out.
Okay, so this is not happening. Um, maybe you guys are stronger than I am or have better ways to hammer this, but like I have been hammering this for the last 45 minutes. It's not coming out. Thankfully, I've got a really nice buddy who has a shop down the street. Uh, if you've been following the channel for some time, you know it's uh, Cody's Fisher Performance and Hot Rod, and he's gonna be nice enough to throw these guys in his hydraulic press for me. I'm gonna take both the coilovers, I'm gonna take the, the actual studs that need to go in there just to make sure everything is okay. Uh, my buddy Travis is gonna come pick me up, it's just like down the street. And uh, I'll actually take my camera there so you guys can see exactly what it looks like. <laughs> So if you're getting the Cobb lift kit, you're probably not gonna be able to get those studs out at home. Yeah. Come on, Sam. <laughs> so I, I just got back from Cody's and if you're a longtime follower of the channel, you actually already know uh, Fisher Performance and Hot Rods is actually where I first went to get my wheels done and to get the uh, cat back cut. And I gotta tell you, if they're such great friends and I really appreciate everything to do that they do and the fact that they're so close by. So if you guys are ever looking for a, a shop to do like good quality work that's not gonna charge you like an arm and a leg, check out Fisher's Hot Rod and Performance or Fisher's Performance and Hot Rods. Um, they do tuning, they do, well, tuning like for like hot rods and like muscle cars and stuff like that. They do a lot of really cool shit. So again, if you need something in St. Louis, that's where I usually end up. All right, now that that's done, what I can actually show you guys, what I wanted to show you was how to put the, um, the bolts and stuff into this with the spacers and get these bolted onto the car. Cause like we're almost done, man. Everything is like ready to go. I have it all placed exactly where I need it. All I needed to do was take those stupid studs out. Now that they're out, we can finish up. So here's the play with the spacer. Basically, you gotta, there's only one way it can go. So you need to just line it up. Put you, they give you these golden, uh, these golden uh, bolts. They need to actually go, oh, actually they, looks like they actually go. You can't just push them in, you have to screw them in which is fun. So that's what needs to happen on both sides. Then also what you need to do is there's two types of nuts that are in there. There's the ones that are flat and then there's these serrated looking ones. These are the ones you want to put in the back. So make sure you get the right ones for the back. The other ones go in the front, which I have already installed. Okay, so now the coilovers are in. The rear suspension is now, actually I got both the coils bolted up. Now we need to look at um, putting in the, the end links in there. They are adjustable, so what I basically I have, I have them loose, and this is basically why they need to go. There's these two pieces here that'll go on with some grease underneath. Loosen these up. They said make them about 18 to 20 millimeters longer than the stock ones, which is what I have done. And you need a washer on both sides of this bolt down here and you need one washer is going to go on one side and this is going to go through and this washer is going on the other side and this is what's going to be going to the sway bar. So I'm going to get these two installed on both sides. I am going to have to lift the arm to connect to the knuckle somehow because that right now that is not happening. So I'm going to have to compress the spring or so something. I don't know what I, I, <laughs> I haven't good. Let me show you what, what that situation looks like right now. So you're not surprised either. So you can see here that this is a good distance away from this. So I think I'm gonna have to push this up to get this connected here. And I still gotta get the sway bar connected as well. So we have some work to do here. Um, I gotta move that. I'm trying to do both sides as close to even as I can. And uh, I'm gonna set this camera up so you guys can kind of watch me work a little bit. And I'll, I'll tell you if I run into any weirdo issues. But as of right now, I'm basically just going in reverse of everything I've done so far. And it hasn't really been an issue.
I'll be honest, this video was actually a little difficult to shoot for me, but as you can see, we are done. That is the rear, looks awesome. And this is the front, looks pretty cool. I'll of course take some more pictures and uh, probably take some more clips later today or maybe tomorrow. I still have to get out of here. I gotta go do my alignment. A buddy of mine is being nice enough to get that done for me. Uh, <laughs> the car is so damn high. It is crazy how high it is. But uh, I can't wait to see what it drives like. Of course, I gotta go get the alignment now. And uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, everything is good. All right, here it is, completely aligned. And I drove it and it drives great, other than the fact that it is super windy today. And of course, now that it's lifted, it is a little bit on the floaty side. But overall, it's not bad. And really for the, the intended purpose that it is, going on, on the road, on the dirt and stuff like that, it should be a lot of fun. Uh, already it was a lot of fun, but I just needed to get off the coilovers because there's no really, no real reason to be on the coilovers. Uh, I hadn't really experienced any issues with it. No real rubbing. Of course, like it was already stock, so like it, that really wasn't a problem. Um, and now, well, not stock. When we were on the coilovers, it really wasn't an issue with the coilovers. Now that it's like a little bit higher, you can see it's like almost five inches. Yeah, it's considerably considerably more of a gap. When we measured it the other night, it was like the size of my phone, and now it's like maybe seven inches of clearance underneath the car, which means if we decide to go on the off-road track, uh, instead of just like doing the rally track, maybe just going over the, the hills and stuff that Diodynamics is gonna put, I might actually be able to do that, because, and that's even with the side skirts on, I probably will eventually take those off, but I don't know what I would put in its place. Uh, they've, <laughs> you know, I painted these. I actually painted these using uh, Amazon paint and I'm surprised how long they've lasted. Uh, next, I actually, the next project that I need to do after this is, which I'm probably gonna do later this evening, is I need to get the bumper bar out, I need to get it painted, and I need it ready to go for this weekend. I don't know how long that's gonna take. I still need to clean up all this mess. This was, this was a tough one. Now, it's been a couple of days since I actually finished this installation and a lot of things have happened, but I don't wanna spoil a whole lot. Some of you who've been online on the Facebook group kind of already know. Um, so here is the deal with this kit. It is very easy to install as long as you have the right tools. The hardest part about it was actually getting the studs out from the rear stock suspension, which I was not able to do at home. Obviously, as you guys saw, I actually had to take it to my buddy's shop. So uh, your mileage may vary depending on what kind of uh, equipment you have available to you. So something to keep in mind. Of course, you do need to get like the, uh, the pass-through ratchet set. Very, very important. But to be honest, a lot of this, that's really it. Everything else is if you've ever removed suspension before, it's pretty much the same. Um, you can always just pay somebody to do it. That is also a great option. Now, I do want to give a big thank you to quite a lot of people for this one. Cobb for sending me the kit, first of all. So, big thank you to them. Uh, my buddy, uh, Grant, who has helped me so many times with uh, alignments for the car. I generally just go to him because he, he works at Subaru, so he always takes care of me. And also, I do want to point out, he does have a, a YouTube channel, that underscore black underscore hatch. If you don't follow him, please go shoot him a follow. He does some really cool drift content lately with his Mustang, and he does have everybody's favorite WX model. It is a hatchback. So please go and uh, subscribe to his channel and kind of help him out as well, as he has helped me out a ton. Then, of course, my friend Travis, who actually picked me up because my car was inoperable at that time when I couldn't get the rear suspension to uh, comply. Uh, then I obviously, Cody and his dad, who have also been a huge help uh, pretty much since before even this car, even going all the way back to the 2021 WRX I had, they helped me a lot because uh, <laughs> almost two years ago, I actually tried to do the J-pipe on my 2021 WRX at home and I couldn't get the studs to come out. And uh, we had to go through a lot of stuff. So they've been just massive supporters and have helped me in more ways than I can even remember, right? So. Uh, when it comes to YouTube, a lot of this stuff sometimes can't be done without the help of others. And I'm very thankful that I have a great support team 
that I can call upon even sometimes if they don't know that I'm about to call them. So hope you guys found this video informative and if you are doing a lift kit of some kind that is a spacer lift kit, this probably will apply to you. I do know that there are spring kits, um, like raising springs. I think there's kits like that, but I'm not too familiar with those. Uh, I actually do need to research more about that, like what are some of the options that are available, but this has been great. And uh, with that, I will see you guys in the next one.